Okay, Mr. Watson here, and in this video we're going to look at Q utilization. So this comes under in the Cambridge syllabus under attentional control. So let's start with this term here and see what we mean. So we have a attention, which is basically what an individual is observing. We then have focus. This is the central point of our attention. So we might have our attention on multiple things, but if we're focused, we have a central point to our attention. And then we have concentration, the ability to perform with a clear and present focus. So what it says is that attention is more, this attentional control is more effective if the performer concentrates on cues that are relevant, okay, at the particular time. Um, and if they and it's important not to get distracted so that you can keep picking out these cues because if you don't then you get no information and won't be able to impact the play. So I'm going to put in a box here a standard answer that you would put is what's attentional control and it's an athlete who is concentrating is said to have their attention focus clearly and presently on the task at hand. Okay so that's just kind of putting them terms together so someone who's high with attentional control they can have an effective performance because they are concentrating on task relevant cues you this can also be known as selective attention so athletes have commonly referred to this as their level of focus and like I said they focus on not only fo the ability to focus on the task relevant cues but also the ability to suppress the task irrelevant cues so out of all the information they're receiving they can focus on what is relevant to the task and control that distraction okay so that's a part where you might want to pause and get these key terms down so let's take a look at Q utilization theory um, and as you'll see there we've got the inverted U theory as this is this Q utilization is often viewed alongside this so we're going to look at how it what it means. So what, let's start with low level of arousal. And what the utilization suggests is that our perceptual lens, like what we're seeing at the time in the game, our lens widens excessively. Okay? So what that means is we're seeing task relevant cues and task irrelevant cues. So what's happening is we've got an information overload that selective attention clearly and presently focused on the task at hand it cannot operate so concentration is not focused when we are under aroused so as you can imagine as we move up the graph we get to that optimal arousal okay which is a moderate level okay and that gives us our highest performance so what this suggests is our perceptual lens adjusts to the ideal width Okay, so what that means is selective attention can operate. We can focus on them task relevant cues. Um, Q utilization predicts cue selection, so that's just focusing on them task relevant cues and acting accordingly. So concentration is maximized, you are focused on the task in hand. Okay, and similarly to the um, inverted U theory, as arousal gets higher. It's going to have a dip in performance and this is what Q utilization says what it says is that perceptual lens continues to narrow but excessively okay we're actually just focused on one thing something that might have bugged us in the game someone might have put a, a bit of a challenge on us and all we can focus on is getting them back and then we're no use to our teammates so what we'd say here is selective attention cannot operate and it's called hypervigilance and panic because some people get over aroused they're too motivated for the game they're really worried about it they go in they're over aroused they get the ball in a basketball game and they quickly throw it and they throw it and someone will intercept because they've just panicked okay so let's take a look at some examples okay so at the low an example of this is when a basketball team underestimates and loses to a lesser opponent so they're not really motivated for the game they're like distracted by the crowd. They're not really tracking where their opponents are going. They're just taking in too much information 
under arousal, okay? Optimal arousal, an example would be a basketball player like playing really well, so making consistent, successful passes. He's making interceptions, he's winning rebounds, okay? He can't really do much wrong. It's also known as being in the zone, um, and we'll talk a little bit that as we move on through the syllabus that will be coming up next for us, okay? So just someone who's playing really well, they're picking up on all the task-relevant cues, and they are acting accordingly, they're playing really well. And as we go, high arousal, an example would be, like I've just said on the previous side, would be a basketball player receiving the ball and panicking. As a result, he throws an interception right into the defender's hands, and everyone's thinking, how did he not see them? He, ha he hasn't picked up on the task relevant cues because he's just so narrowly focused, he's over aroused, so it's not good for performance. So, I'm going to show you <clears throat> on another diagram here what it can look like. So on this diagram you're going to see some plus signs. They are the task relevant cues. You're also going to see some um, task irrelevant cues represented by a zero. So as you can see there, on the axis at the bottom we've got the low arousal and high arousal. I'm just going to draw two lines here. And if you look up from low arousal, you'll see that perceptual lens is very wide. You can see all the task relevant cues. However, you can also see all the task irrelevant cues. But as our arousal moves to a moderate level, that optimal arousal, we get optimal performance. So our perceptual lens has narrowed to an ideal width. Okay, so this is where we can concentrate selective attention is used okay but then as you can see okay as they go we come too focused and we do not see anything at all we've seen red we're too zoned in okay so what we're going to look at here is how we can improve cue utilization okay because it is a skill that can be learned okay and it's something that coaches often work on uh, with their athletes so increasing the intensity of the stimulus so the coach could ensure there is a game-like intensity in training. This will help players try to achieve their optimal arousal. It will also prevent under arousal, like in the example, a basketball team that's lost to a lesser opponent. Okay, It's because they're under aroused, but in training, if you're constantly playing at this game-like intensity, you're used to getting yourself to that optimal arousal regularly. Okay, stimuli training, the coach could ensure the performer understands which stimuli to focus on. Stimuli training, another one, the coach could ensure the performer understands which level of arousal is optimal for a particular skill. So as we know from AS level, shot put is linked with high arousal levels because you need a lot of power and you really need to be pumped up as you're trying to throw a PB. Positive reinforcement, the coach could introduce a reward for the most focused player in training. Um, we've got occlusion tasks. This is what requires people to make predictions, such as like you get a you present an image on a screen, but you don't give all the information. So you could have to judge the likely direction of a tennis shot, but the ball's not there. So you're trying to predict where it went. You know, I've often done these in magazines where you spot where the the attacker is going to shoot the penalty from his body position. And also eye tracking methods. These these last two here, they, they are used at a much higher level, but this does happen. So what happens is they get athletes to watch a film uh, of a sporting clip, but through software, they record the location, duration, uh, and the number of times the, the viewer's eyes move on the screen so they're tracking what they fixate on what their focus what their sense selective attention goes to and then from there they'll work with them saying you were not focused on the task relevant cues there your eyes were scanning too much or you might be scanning too less okay so that's just some ways there that we can improve cue like utilization it might be a screen you pause and write some of these down Okay, so that's Q utilization. Thank you.